you're watching Car Babble, I'm Ewan. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll know that I get really excited about certain features in modern cars. So I thought I'd share with you the top eight things that I think once you've had these things in a car, you'll struggle to live without them. So buckle up and let's get into it. So a lot of German car brands, when they sell you a pack, it'll have loads of safety tech in it that you'll probably just want to switch off and never use. And then it'll also have adaptive cruise control. And I say as a pack because it's never standard. And that really annoys me because it's such an amazing feature and you just never seem to find it on a used premium German car because nobody ever buys a pack because it's so expensive. I don't know why, because they can clearly afford it anyway. But you can get it standard on a Toyota Corolla and lots of other cars. Adaptive cruise control, absolutely amazing. You're on a long journey, motorway, dual carriageway. You just don't need to use the pedals. You just set the distance from the car in front, the speed you want to be at as a maximum, and it will follow that car. And yeah, you just need to sit back and relax and just do the steering. And then there's a lot of ways you can get away from that now as well. You can get steer assist and just basically pilot assist and all that. Never do anything, but not using your pedals really does save a lot of energy over a long journey. It's an absolutely great feature, and if you really do do a lot of long journeys, you really need to get it. Having to dip your beams manually when driving at night on a country road is a real pain in the arse. And thankfully, if you have high beam assist, that kind of helps with that because it will dip it for you. But that can be quite unreliable. I've had a lot of cars with that, and I've not really found it that great. But you can get this thing called adaptive LED headlights or matrix LED headlights. And that is where essentially it uses lots of pixel LEDs and it will adapt the beams around oncoming traffic and avoid dazzling them whilst keeping you in high beam the whole time. And it seems to work seamlessly and never misses a beat. The bottom line is you don't have somebody flashing you going, Ugh, because you basically blinded them. You don't have any of that. You can rely on it and it works perfectly. It's such a useful feature if you do a lot of driving at nights because yeah, doing that with your beams constantly, it's a pain in the neck. So if you never have to do that, you're just driving along, I've got maximum visibility, and then a car's coming, you know instantly that it's gonna not dazzle them and you can still see ahead. It really is a great feature and a lot of cars now have this, usually higher up the range, but it's definitely one that if you do a lot of driving at night, it's worth getting. A lot of keys for cars can be a bit of a faff to use and they'll maybe have like really small buttons down the side and it just like a bit of a really kind of like, you've got to be really deliberate to go, where's the button I need to press to open the car? So if your car has keyless entry, where essentially if it's in your pocket, you can just walk up to it, pull the handle and get in, that is a real luxury to have. And it's definitely something that once you've had it, you'll really want to always have it. Unfortunately, it's usually part of a pack or it's something that's really high up the range. So it is something that, yeah, if you had it before, then you go for a lower spec car, you're probably gonna feel a bit bereft if you don't have it anymore. You will struggle to find now cars that don't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto at least further up the range, but some have it standard across the range. And they really should make this a standard feature because ultimately all it is, is allowing you to then interface your smartphone with the car. And that's great for a few things. One, sometimes the sat-navs in cars can be pretty rubbish and clunky and you have to keep updating them and stuff like that. And they just don't always work very well. But then again, sometimes they'll work when you don't have a phone signal. So this is the one downside, but Google Maps that you can then use from your smartphone through your infotainment is always gonna be a more superior satellite navigation system. It's fantastic and it works anywhere. It's just great. But other apps you can use, including Spotify, if you love your tunes, all these things can be synced with the car. And one of the things I love most about it is if your car is getting on a bit, it keeps the car feeling modern for longer because essentially you can always get the most up-to-date apps through your smartphone and over the air updates and stuff like that. And so you're always gonna be able to sync that with your car. So if everything else starts to feel out of date, no problemo. So it's a great feature and more modern cars now are starting to go wireless with this, which is really where you wanna be because having to plug a cable in is a pain in the arse. And so yeah, it's a great feature to have in cars and you're gonna to start to see this as the norm, but it's definitely one that if it doesn't have that on a car you're looking at, you maybe don't wanna buy it. For as long as I can remember, there's been heating elements in the back windows of cars. So when you wanna defrost your car, you just press a button in a few seconds, it's done. I don't understand why this hasn't been mandated across the whole car industry for front windscreens. And I know there could be a problem with head up displays, but that's not an issue altogether. But Volvo, Ford, and Jaguar, to name a few, they have found a solution for this. And it's very simple, really. You just put very, very thin elements through your front window and you can have a heated windscreen as well. So in winter time, when you get your car and you've got to wait ages for the fans to basically defrost the front window. You don't need to worry about that now. Press the button a few seconds, boom, it's done. 
absolutely love it. Usually I reverse into my driveway, but I quite often don't reverse into car parking spaces. And occasionally I do go in head first into my driveway if I'm in a rush, which means I need to reverse out of it. And there's a blind spot in our hedge. And there's a really useful bit of safety tech now called rear cross traffic alert that when you are reversing out of a space or like out of my driveway and you can't really see what's coming past you, it has sensors that will beep to tell you something's coming or even slam the brakes on to stop you actually going any further. Absolutely brilliant technology and it is one of the most useful bits of safety tech you can get. Something that's a bit of a ball ache on a cold winter's day or maybe when it's snowing is having to go out and defrost your car when you're not actually ready to get in it. So you've got to sit in your breakfast and you go, oh God, I've got to go and put my slippers on or my wellies, go away through the snow, go out to my car and then start it up and heat it up so that when you finally drive off, it's defrosted and it doesn't feel like an ice box inside. Well, there is a solution now for this and it's called remote start. And most EVs have it as standard, but a lot of internal combustion engine cars do as well. Essentially, it's an app on your phone and you're sitting in your breakfast and you just go, oh, press start your car from you know your kitchen bar and then it starts up the car heats it up for you so when you finally get out for the first time you just get in it it's defrosted it's nice and warm and off you go and i'm going to finish off this list with a really old school bit of tech that actually is still one of the best bits of tech that's come out for a while and that is blind spot monitoring technology it really is one of the best and most useful safety tech bits of kit you can get and it's so simple it's just a sensor in your blind spot that will let you know in different ways when there's a car there. So if you're on a motorway, you don't necessarily need to crank your neck round to check your blind spot, although habitually I think I'll always manually do that myself. But yeah, you can trust it and it'll tell you through your head-up display or a beep or a flashing light in your wing mirror, loads of different ways that will notify you to make sure that you don't change lanes when you shouldn't. Really is a good bit of tech and definitely something that all cars should have. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and please let me know in the comments your thoughts on modern car features that you really like. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.